O'Grady. Um, I'm on the committee of ELT Ireland for the publications officer for the bulletin and I work in CES in Dublin where I am a senior teacher and the social media coordinator for all of the schools in the UK and Ireland. Um, what I'd like to talk to you today about is integrating M learning into a traditional ELT classroom. Um, I'll follow this up by explaining what is M learning? what framework we can use to introduce it, how we redefine our task types, what I did and how I introduced it into my classroom, and the benefits for teachers and students, and then I'll give you some useful apps and websites that you can use in your classroom. So, what is M-Learning? M-Learning is the introduction of learning methods and materials that involve the use of mobile phones or handheld devices. So it's the next step on from e-learning. So instead of using a desktop, we're going to use the resources that we have in our classrooms with our students and introduce technology into the classroom. So what are the acronyms? BYOD, bring your own device. BYOT, bring your own tablet. It's bite-sized, it's small. We don't do the whole lesson on your mobile, but you integrate it into different task types. It's just in time. So. When you have that question and you go, oh my goodness, I don't know if it's on a controversial issue, for example. Everyone, take out your devices, let's go to Sky News and see what it says. Integrated reading activity. DNA, it's device neutral applications. So as we have Android and we have I iOS, you have to get ones that can go with both so that everyone can participate in your class. Obviously, we need Wi-Fi or data but most institutions and language schools have this on hand. <clears throat> so how do we introduce it? We need to change our framework. So we use the TPAC framework. So it's technological, pedagogical, and content knowledge, and we integrate that together. So we already have our pedagogical knowledge from our training and from our experience. We have our content knowledge for level-specific classes. What TPAC tries to do is to include the technological knowledge and reinvent our framework for our classes. Okay? Um, how do we do this? We use what was called the SMAR model. Okay? I will explain that in a moment. What we do is we look at our task types, traditional writing. What do we do? We normally get our pens and our papers and, okay, guys, let's write. In reality, how often do we write? We don't. We email, we text, we tweet, we Instagram, we YouTube, we send images immediately. So writing as a skill, although necessary, once the students leave the classroom, is it functional for them, unless they're in a university or a course of some kind. So what we do is we do direct substitution. We change the writing and we get them to type. Send the email versus write the email. Then we move on to a functional improvement. So we've changed from paper, we've gone via email, everyone can share it. Then we move on to a task redesign, where instead of just correcting the email, handing it back, finished, it's over, we continue developing that resource. And we can change it into a class blog. So everyone can have peer feedback and everyone can see it and have access to the information and the knowledge. Finally, with the SMAR model, they say a complete redesign. Create new tasks. So how can we use this email that you've sent to the teacher in class? Screenshot. Take a screenshot if it's on your computer or if it's on your phone. And we can peer correct in class. Everyone can share it. WhatsApp. Have a WhatsApp class group, and then you can focus on, okay, identify linking devices, what one did Peter use, what one did Emma use, compare and contrast. Okay, it's a really easy thing to do, and this is the idea. So it was developed by Dr. Ruben Puentelura, and it starts with substitution. Substitution, so technology acts as a direct substitute with no functional change. Then we augment it. Technology acts as a direct substitute with a functional improvement. We've gone from paper to email. Then we modify it. Technology allows for significant task redesigns. We've modified it now into a blog. And the final stage in the SMAR model 
is redefinition. Technology allows for the creation of new tasks previously inconceivable. So if we think of our mobile devices that we have, if we've taken a screenshot, we can go in and we can create a gap fill or an info gap or find the missing word. You go into your photo editor and you just use the little white color and you clear it. And then pair work using the phone. Guess the missing word. Which linking device should be here? How can we do it? And it's just no paper, all on your phone. So it's good for the environment as well. <laughs> What, what I did, what I'm going to do next is just explain, I know there's a lot of images here, how I decided to introduce M-Learning little by little into my lessons and why I did it. I went to a talk recently on what is M-Learning, so I'm new to it as well because I knew about e-learning and I did not know what M-Learning was. It just stands for mobile learning, anything you can do when you're mobile. So I started off really simply by substituting my big heavy learner dictionaries for the Cambridge English Online Dictionary. We have Wi-Fi in our school, so it was great. I didn't have to lumber all of those, and we know the size of them, they're big. And if you have 14 students in your class, you're carrying seven, you're carrying your books, you're carrying your resources, and you're trying to carry your coffee and go to class. It's not gonna work. This, I found, was really good in class. I substituted it and it was really efficient. It was fast. Students, if you, if you notice, are not accustomed to looking for words in dictionaries anymore. They just Google or they translate it. So the process of going A, B, C, which is the next letter, and turning the page and finding the word is quite difficult for them, especially at lower levels and especially for well, from my experience, my Arabic learners, because it's the opposite direction, and my Asian learners, because the alphabet's different. So looking in a dictionary physically, they find very cumbersome, I think is the word I'd, I'd like to use. It's difficult for them, it's a challenge, and then other students who are accustomed to doing that are frustrated. So we avoid the frustration, because we can work in pairs very quickly using Cambridge. Students responded well to that. What I did next, actually, is I did a WhatsApp group. So I have a class WhatsApp group. Every, it's only for my class. Nobody else has access to it. And I use it for homework. Every day, it's, there's a task. A student has a nominated day. So for example, Julie, you're, you're a Saturday. Today, you have to screenshot a photo of something and ask a question. Everyone participates in the group, and they have to type. So it's it, small, integrated homework skills where they have to type, so it's spelling and grammar, and they have to read to understand the other people's responses. And it's a bit more normal because everyone has WhatsApp groups, that's how we interact, okay? Day two, Sunday, Emma, you're going to ask a question, but you're going to record it. Everybody has to listen and they have to respond by recording their answer. So then you've, you've alternated it to listening, speaking, and pronunciation, which is great. They do it in their own language. You see them responding orally all the time. So transfer what they're used to over to English. Um, they respond well to that. Um, they find it less daunting than here is your present perfect homework. Please complete it. Order the sentences, structure it. I could give them a question with the form and see how often they try and reproduce it in class when we do homework correction using the audio. And um, then what I did was I used the Journal and Sky. I choose these over the Irish Times because they're short and they're easier to read and they're less scary for the learner. And it's topical. It's controversial sometimes, often, but it's what they're seeing in the news, so why not use it in class? Um, <clears throat> again, this can be used as just a reading comprehension. If I want them to look at articles based on, I don't know, Irish rugby, for example, I can tailor questions for those articles. They do it in pairs and they answer. Or you can do it as a systems. What are the linking devices used in the article? Identify four types of reported speech, our passive presence. You can focus it on different ways. You can tailor the tasks. You can do it for context, 
you can do it for vocabulary. Like I said, screenshot, erase it. What word is missing? Two seconds is all that takes. And also Sky News, you can do for listening. Um, I used it for, they have a video section, but for lower learners, lower level learners, because they have the subtitles. So you can do it as a listening or reading and find the answer. Um, Google is Google. We can use that anytime. Um, web quests. Does anyone know what a web quest is? Yeah? It's just you're going, you're, you have a plan. You have something that you have to find online using a series of questions. So it's more active research. Um, there's lots of websites that you can tailor it. A web, web quest for particular topics a web quest for um, different skills as well to find the information. This you can use as an integrated lesson. If you do it in pairs, one person has to find the information and dictate it, and the other person has to listen and write, and then you flip for the next question so everyone gets to practice using all of their skill set. As this happens with web quests, often vocabulary comes up, so then you go back, you use your Cambridge Dictionary, and we develop our vocabulary as we're using the internet, the way we would in our daily lives. Um, the AE Sounds app I, would, I used for um, present perfect continuous and present perfect simple revision. I had them create words using the phonemic script and the other students had to guess what they were using the sounds on the app. And it, they found it quite fun because you look at the phonemic script and they go, oh, I don't even know what that is. But when they start pushing the, the script and hearing the sounds, they work out what word it is. So it's a nice way to integrate a different type of pronunciation into your class versus back chaining or drilling constantly. Um, I use Kahoot not so often because it does take some extra planning. It's um, a quiz. Um, if you want to use it for revision, for vocabulary, everybody gets a code and they join, you display it on a PowerPoint and there's a question and there's a time limit and they have to answer and choose the correct answer. So it's a little bit of Friday fun time, generally. The same with uh, Heads Up for vocabulary. Because it's physical movement, um, <laughs> they, they enjoy doing it in class, it gets them up, it gets them active. This can be done for two minutes at the end of class every day. Um, that is how I've tried to introduce it into my lessons, just little by little, and only short tasks, because I don't think we're at the stage of using M-Learning for a two-hour lesson. But the students use the devices, it prevents them looking at their Instagram or their Facebook and their WhatsApp if you make them use their device. So then they're actively participating in the lesson. Um, very quickly, because I'm out of time, these are the benefits I got. Access to online resources, we have more flexibility in our teaching, increased learner motivation, increased learner involvement. The students have access to authentic materials, learning flexibility, better participation and better performance from the students. And finally, these are some apps you can use for listening, listening, listening. <laughs> Um, Explain Everything is a shared whiteboard application where everyone can see everyone's work um, and we know the rest of them and obviously YouTube I didn't put on but you can use that for many different levels because you can slow down the speed of the audio. <coughs> Thank you for listening. <laughs>